Howdy folks, Mikey McKernan here, aka Booha Man, aka is not funny. Tonight, I'm not booked anywhere. No gigs, I got one gig coming up. You're not booked tonight, but you're gonna do a vlog. Does that mean it's time for Open Mikey, Open Mikey, Open Mikey. Tonight, I'm gonna go to my favorite open mic, Boomtown Brewery. I love Boomtown, we've been there before, multiple times. We've been there once that I know of, but we're gonna go again, cause I love it and it's free mic. So today's adventure, not much really of an adventure. I wanted to talk about something that is very, very important to me, and that is books. Books, 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 more books. Paperback Harry Potter, The Complete Calvin Hobbes. If you follow me on Instagram, I always like to post each book that I'm reading, and I read a lot, I really do. And I wanted to share my most prized possession. It's a little bit different than other things, there's no value to it, except for to me in my heart. It's not worth anything, but it's worth a lot to me. And it's this. This is my book list. It's old, you see how this is an old, old school looking notebook? Since 2005, I've written down every single book I've read. That's right. My love of reading started a little bit in high school. It all started with, you can probably guess. Boo, boo, doo, boo, 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 boo. Harry Potter, duh. I know, she's whatever. She's upset about all sorts of things. She doesn't like trans people, which is whack. It's my sophomore year in high school. I was playing ice hockey and my mom was like, oh, you should read Harry. Did I tell this story already? I feel like I've told this story. Anyways, I'm gonna tell it again, if I've told it already. Apologize, you can hear it again. I feel like I have. I feel like I mentioned Harry Potter before. Did I? I repeat myself? Anyways, it's for the vlog. <laughs> like I read Harry Potter, it's kid books. Tough defenseman, Scotty on my team. My mom's like, Scotty reads Harry Potter. And I was like, what? Scotty reads Harry Potter? All right, for Christmas, give me a book. She got me Prisoner of Azkaban. I read that book in three days. Could not put it down. I remember I was reading and then she was like, hey, I'm gonna go to the grocery store. Do you wanna come with me? I was like, oh yeah, sure. And I put the book down to go to the grocery store and I'm at the grocery store still thinking about the book. And then I went to the, remember when the grocery store had books? <laughs> Ironically, I actually purchased the seventh Harry Potter book at a grocery store. But I went to the books at the grocery store and I found the book and I picked up reading where I left off. And then my mom was done shopping. I wrote down what page I left off at. And I went home and I finished the book. I know I started with the third book out of the, the series and then I reread them all and fell in love. And then I remember when my grandma died, she had her craft room. There was like literally nowhere to walk in. My sisters and my mother, they had to go through all that stuff. And so there was all these stacks of notebooks and I took one, I took a bunch actually. And this one became my book list. But we also got all her books and uh, in high school too, I read her, look at these, look at this version of the Lord of the Rings. Isn't that freaking awesome? Is it upside down? Oh, it smells so old. So I read these in high school too. So I wasn't a big, big nerd. The summer out of high school is where it all started. There was four books that I read that summer. Two of them were books that I read or was supposed to read during my senior year that I just didn't care about. I was like, whatever. That was The Stranger by Albert Camus and Sid Arthur by Herman Hess. And then of course that summer I reread them. I was like, whoa. I'm loving this, these are amazing. And I was really upset because I didn't really pay attention in school and stuff like that towards the end of your senior year. C student, That's folks, cool. I've never been to college. <laughs> Actually, I went to one day of college, I went to my friend's film class and I sat in and answered questions. The teacher was like, who are you? But wasn't really into it. But then I read those two books and I was like, oh my gosh, I wish I could talk to Mr. Nath, my English teacher again. I'm into this now. And then I was like, I need to read some more. So I went to Barnes and Noble and I literally just went through all the fiction. And then I remember coming across this one book that had so many different titles of it. And I was like, this book must be good. And I picked it up and I loved it. And it blew my mind. That book was On the Road by Jack Kerouac. Then after that, I had to read the one book that so many teenagers related to, and then it was actually required reading, but I never was required. And that was Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. And after that summer, I was in love. 2005 rolls around, I have all these notebooks and I'm reading so much. So I told myself, 
I should keep a list. I would like to write down every single book I ever read because that would be so cool. Like if I get older and I have this list that has every single book that I've ever read because maybe one day, like one of my dreams is to own a ginormous library of every single book I've ever read. It would just be so cool. My little library that I have in my living room right here, it's already full. The top shelf, except for this last one right there. All these right here, top shelf, I have read every single one of these books cover to cover well except for that one i actually have not read that one that's letters between jack kerouac and alan ginsberg oh i just read this one recently that was sad james baldwin giovanni room that one's freaking beautiful i got some star wars books high republic anybody reading the high republic please reach out to me i, I need friends to talk about it writing down every single one of these books Book list, 2005. Some of them, look at James and Giant Peach, some of the witches by Roald Dahl. You can, you know, argue with me that like, these are kids books, you're gonna count these? Yes, cover to cover, okay? First year, being so drunk on books, I ended up reading 51 books. These high roof beam carpenters, Seymour introduction by J.D. Salinger. 2006, well not so much, seven. 2007, I got into, there's a lot of good ones in here. I actually read my favorite book of all time. That is Franny and Zoe. My favorite author is J.D. Salinger, mostly because he has published four books, Catcher in the Rye, Franny and Zoe, Raise the High Roof Beam Carpenter, Seymour Introduction, and Nine Stories. And out of the four books, excluding Catcher in the Rye, the three are revolved around a fictional family, the Glass family. It's a family of seven. Gah. You claim to be a fan, you can't remember the information. Anyways. The reason why I love those books, because I'm the youngest of seven. I'm from a huge family that I absolutely love and adore. They are my favorite people in this entire universe. They are my identity. I was raised by them, taught me almost everything I know, the good and the bad. And so the Glass family, I relate to it. When they were young, they were on a TV show called It's a Wise Kid. And then Franny and Zoe is my favorite book because it's the two youngest kids now becoming young adults and they can't stand society. That's because their older siblings raise them off of too much intellectual despair. I relate to that so much. I hope I can relate to another book like that eventually. Franny and Zoe is my favorite book. If you never read it, please, please read it. So many books, so many books. I like to read so many books. 2008, Naked Lunch, Ham on Rye. Ooh, Charles Bukowski. That is his masterpiece in my opinion. Sophie's World was really good. A little philosophy. Slaughterhouse-Five, so good. Yes, and I did read some. Graphic novel. 2012, I only read four books. Why? Because I had a girlfriend. That year was three, that one was five. You know, see, when you get a girlfriend, you're not reading so much. And then the breakup year, I read one book. And it was just the screenplay of Fantastic Beasts. 2018, I was going through a lot of a writer's block. And then I was like, you know what? I got to get back into reading. Of course, I started with the Harry Potters to get my brain going. This, this is the year, like in 1491. That's good Native American history. I started getting into history recently. That's then the pandemic hit. Dun dun dun. What did I do during the pandemic? I read books. Okay, I read so much. I wake up every. I went to my parents' house. I wake up every morning and I read for about three hours in the morning. Then when my mom came down from her nap, we would do a puzzle and then we would eat. We did that almost every day of the pandemic. I loved it. I spent so much quality time with my mother and I read so many books. How many books did you read in 2020, Mikey? This is the most I've ever read. 72 books. I read 72 books in one year. That is crazy. You'll notice too, a lot of SW, 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 Star Wars. 2020 was also the year that I did not discover because it's been there forever, but I discovered going to the library. I wanted to read all these Star Wars books because it all started with watching The Mandalorian, falling back in love with Star Wars because the, the sequel trilogy was poop. There's a Darksaber at the end of it. I gotta learn about Darksaber. So I watched the Clone Wars. Clone Wars introduced me to Ahsoka Tano. Fell in love with Ahsoka Tano. She had a young adult novel, read it. So good. Then I was like, I want more Star Wars, but there's so many books. I don't wanna pay for them. <gasps> Welcome to the library. I ended up getting four library cards. Uh, Ranch Cucamonga, Pasadena, Burbank, and of course, Los Angeles. No, in 2021, I read 39 books. And then 2022, I told myself, 20 books a year, that's the goal. 
read 20 books a year. Now we're on 2023. Look at Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. How Star Wars conquered the universe. Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. Lonesome Dove. And then 14. I've finished 14 books so far this year. So since 2005, I have read 382 books. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hold your applause, hold your applause. No one applauding that. Mikey, you read so many books. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Hobbies are healthy. Find your hobbies. I love reading. I love going to my favorite coffee shop and reading. Which is funny because doing stand-up comedy is so on the lonely path. And it's like, oh, what do you like to do for fun? Like if I meet new people, what do you like to do for fun? I like to go to a coffee shop and read. It's the most antisocial thing ever. But who cares? Be proud. Right now, I'm reading this book. The Summer of 1876 by Chris Wimmer. He's got a podcast called Legends of the Old West. This is his first book. Of course I'm gonna read it because I love that podcast. Oh my God, if you listen to that podcast, shout out to you. This one am I insanely proud of only because Reinventing Your Life by Jeffrey Young and Janet Kol Kolsky. Look at me, trying to be a reader, can't even pronounce names. The Breakthrough Program to and negative behavior and feel great again. I know, I'm trying to better my life and negative behavior because my thoughts are so bad. That's my prized possession, the book list. It's almost done too. I'm almost gonna fill it up and then I have to start a new one, which I'm sad because I don't have any more grandma notebooks to do. This is the thing I care about more in the world other than family. And then of course, once I get a loved one, but oh, I love reading. So much. I can talk about it all the time. I want to talk about books. Why don't you do a book review channel? And see, the thing is, I read so much, and in the book community, they're like, oh, you, you know, you read so much. Oh, you, you, all you do is care about keeping track of all the books you read yet, but do you retain any of the information? There's a lot of these books in this list that I cannot recall plots. Because I read so much, and I truly do it for my my favorite form of entertainment. It's not so much like I just shut my brain off, but reading is the most intimate art there is. You need your imagination to paint this story. I love doing that. And then of course, when I'm done reading, if it's really, really good, I think about it, but at the same time, I don't reflect about it. And then so recently, I've been trying to reflect more on what I'm reading. So when I'm done with a book, I'll go and be like, what did I just read? Let's think about this, let's talk about this. So I tell myself like, oh, if I need to tell somebody about what I just read, this is what I would say. Especially with the Star Wars books always coming out, I always have stuff that I wanna read. Like I know what I'm gonna read next because it's coming out. But when I run into a wall and I can't think of anything to read, that's where I go back to my book list and start going back and be like, oh, do you remember this? Do you remember this? Oh, I remember that one. That was such a good one. Oh, let's reread that one again. Big rereader. I really do enjoy rereading books. What's your favorite book? Comment down below. Do you read a lot? Comment down below. I want more book conversations. It's really funny because I love posting my Instagram stories of all the books that I read. If they're really good, some people will hit me up. I always have some nerds always hit me up about Star Wars, which those are nerds, those are my people. That's why I said High Republic. Anybody read the High Republic? Shout out to me, I need more friends to do it. This has gone long-winded enough. I'm going to take you to the best bookstore in Los Angeles. Then we're gonna to go to the open mic and then I'm gonna ask comedians, what are you reading? And do you have a favorite book? So, let's boogie. Do you like my old school library checkout t-shirt? Shout out to Out of Print. They make t-shirts that have books on them. Book t-shirts. Sign me up, ha, 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 please. I like this one too, because it's got my birthday on it. October 7, 1984. I was not born in 84, I was born in 85. The best bookstore in Los Angeles is the Iliad Bookshop. Unfortunately, it's closed on Mondays. This is actually not the entrance. The entrance is around. You like these little books? Bookends here? I love this. Most fantastic murals of all time. Jack Kerouac and Neil Cassidy. Bukowski. This place deserves a video on its own. Still going. We're still going. This mural is amazing. You got hippies, of course. It was open in 1987. It was actually off of Lancashire. It's called the Iliad because it was next to a video store called Odyssey Video Store. Odyssey Iliad, pretty good. But then uh, they moved over here because the Odyssey Video Store became a, <laughs> not a normal video store if you get my drift. Look, okay, here's more of the mirror on this side. Come on and get happy. I love, I love, I love, 
I love George Orwell. He's probably my second favorite author. I love the Iliad Bookshop. Please come here. Please come here. Give them all your money. Buy all their books. Use bookstores. You got books you don't want anymore? Bring them here. You get credit to the store. They'll give you cash. Not as much cash as more as you can get credit. Support the Iliad Bookshop, please. More murals. See? Beautiful mural. But I don't know if you notice this right here, but somebody tried to burn them down last year or earlier this year yo whoever tried to burn down a bookstore especially the iliad you stink I love about this spot too as well is that they opened in this one and then they expanded and this was like the height of like amazon and stuff you're like a used bookstore is expanding literally right here along the chandler bike path too as well which is a sweet sweet bike path i love it it is old railway but now it's a bike path that's what's happening these days that's awesome sorry they're not open today well today because we got to go to boomtown okay monday mike boomtown all right let me take you to la's probably number one bookstore oh, definitely the number one bookstore in los angeles it's the last bookstore i'm in downtown los angeles Spring and 5th Street. Look, they're filming something over there. Duh. This is a new and used bookstore. They sell both. This is the entrance right here. We're going in. I love it. They got these old vaults with all these old books in it. Hey, that lamp looks familiar. I have that lamp. It's a fan again. These rooms probably get really hot. Do I look studious hanging out in these books? I'm a thinker. It's two stories of this right here. We got all sorts of cool art up here. The best part is upstairs. This is where they got like all the like art studios and they have like some of the uh, you just see up here like all the it's just art decorated with books. Check it out. Yeah. Okay. This This place, I'm telling you. One of the reasons why it's There's a chair. Look at this. This is something you'll see all the time when you're ready. This book's over. Look at Books, 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 books. This right here is definitely, if you go on their Instagram, this is stuff you'll see a lot is this too. Oh, they got a vault. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. So much fun. Book tunnel. The timeline I like. I'll be looking for books here. I've read this book. I've read this book. I've read this book. I've read this book. This book's really good. Ugh. Truly, truly cool bookstore. Art gallery and a bookstore. Yes. So much art. Artist studios. Like, cool. Someone's actually in here painting. Creating art. Yeah, this guy right here always has really cool posters. How cool. Damn, they have some cool art in there. Never trust a hippie. So good. This is a cool bookstore. Hills are good. Hills are good. Cool, 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 cool. Will the disappoint never end? My comedy career right here. The problem shared is still a problem. Keep your issues to yourself. I like this one because when I made the hospitalization vlog, I was like, you know, I could have just not told anybody and just moved on, you know, not share all my personal stuff on social media, but <laughs> now that I have a channel, I'm hooked. I bought a sticker. Art is hard. Ironically, when this place first opened, I did an open mic there on that stage right there. I think they still do shows here, but I haven't heard about it in a while. Probably not because people like reading books instead of watching bad comedy. This place opened up for the first time in 2005. I felt like I remember that they used to be in another location because I remember all like the, the this thing right over here. I remember this being somewhere and then they moved and I was like, oh no, that bookstore, they're not here anymore. That's so sad. But then I realized that then they moved to like a way bigger place. And I'm like, yes, copyright music. And you know what? You know what's the best thing to get out of copyright music? Books. The best sound barriers are books. You're trying to do a podcast, do it around books. This is probably a lot of people's number one. I know there's people out there who like to say book soup. It's in Sunset Strip. That's probably the number one. Also, there's another one in Los Vegas called Skylight Books. Oh, 
history lesson your boy used to work there but you didn't realize i worked there because i always worked in the back and i did not like working in the back please come check this place out it's cool buy books i didn't buy a book i gotta buy a sticker because i had to go to the bathroom so bad i'm like trying to look for books but i gotta all right let's go to the gig let's talk to comedians and let's do some stand up that's the last book so that's all you're gonna get uh unfortunately i only got like not that much time left on my meter and i gotta go to the bathroom so bad of course when you get to downtown you gotta go to the bathroom you're in trouble okay a little shepherd fairy before we go yes all right that's it the last bookstore this is cool Ah, they do have a bathroom. I got to use the bathroom. I felt so much better, but still got time on my meter and I had to get back to my car. I parked really far. Parking was not good down here today. I know it is summertime. It's a Monday, but it is still summertime. People on their vacay. I couldn't find any park and that sucks because I wanted also to visit the Central Library. Go visit bookstores in your local town. Support local businesses, especially books, all right? Because now you're watching this on the internet. You're like, I don't read books. Mikey does talk books to me i'm a member on the reddit subreddit books so i get a lot of recommendations too as well all right i'm here at boomtown brewery boomtown open mic my name's in the bucket five minutes it's still daylight obviously but i'm kind of bummed out this mic there's not that many people here this mic used to be popping i used to love coming to this mic every single monday food trucks now they got a, a comedian out here making burgers but no shout out to Michael Silver. <laughs> gotta make your money somehow. We gotta have some food somehow. I I'm sad, cause I'm like, this, another daylight mic. Last time I came here was like two weeks ago. It was in the daylight, I have I tanked. I'm just, I'm prepared for that to happen again. Of course, I looked at that last set and was trying to see what jokes I didn't tell last time. So now I'm thinking about what jokes I can tell and there's not much new ones. I can't even think which ones I wanna try. I wrote one thing down and I'm gonna try it. And if I do remember to try it tonight, then I will bring it up after the set. I will do that. Instead of being how many times where I say what jokes I'm gonna do and I go up there and I forget them. There's not even that many comedians here to talk to and be like, yo, what books are you reading? I asked one friend, he's like, I'm not even reading a book. I'm like, yeah. Plus it's kind of harder because they got the, the mic hasn't started. This would be perfect time to do it. But of course we got copyright music going on. Everybody knows this rule of YouTube. Well, my name's in the bucket. I have a feeling they'll call it soon. And when they do, I will go up there and I will boo-haw them. I've been talking about how I'm trying to get away from all that stuff and people are commenting and let me know like you screw what anybody ever says that's you that's what makes you unique fingers crossed that i get picked and everybody laughs oh yes finally the sun is going behind one of the buildings downtown see look at this view of downtown you got over here you can barely see it because the sun is still nope it's still peaking it's just hitting it right now mandy are you reading anything i am reading a book it's just it's a it's about uh american hardcore the history of hardcore music from 1980 to 1986 pretty good if you don't like hardcore music though i wouldn't recommend it yeah it's pretty good you know the author steven blue blah something steven i don't know the author but it's like a really thick book like yes. you can like use it to beat people up that's pretty hardcore it is pretty hardcore max what book are you reading reading hellboy omnibus right now so it's all the hellboy comics in one place really good Check it out, nothing else like it. CJ, what book are you reading? The Creative Act by Rick Rubin. And then also, uh, we have a we have a real, or we had a real estate problem by Cliff Nesteroff. Oh I my gosh, I, I love that book. That's about yeah. Native Americans and their sense of humor. That's right, they're hilarious. Chris, what are you reading? I'm reading the, the oh boy, I'm reading The Stranger by Camus, Albert oh. Camus, the, the filthy Frenchman. That's one of the four books that got me into reading. I actually brought up The Stranger today in my vlog. That's so strange. Did you ah. say the F word? No. Oh, is that a family show? <laughs> Matt, what book are you reading? I'm reading The Creative Acts by Rick Rubin. You know, just uh, it's all about putting yourself in a state of mind where you're open to creativity and therefore creativity flows. Very nice. important for a comic. I absolutely, I agree. But Matt, you are absolutely dripping, my Miss, friend. Yeah, little, little flare to the pants, a little, little ye in my haw today. Miami drug lord slash masked lesbian look. <laughs> I want to text back to my girlfriend and be like, hey girl, are you serial? Because you're a bag of tricks. <sighs> Has anybody heard that before? So I'm gonna do with every joke at open mics. Have you heard that before? Anybody else, General Meter? You heard that before? Cool. I'm not doing that anymore. Good. Good to know. All right. Where do I go from there? First one up coming out here, plagiarizing. This is gonna go great for the internet channel. I do a YouTube channel. Some of you were forced to subscribe to it. Thank you again. Thank you. I appreciate that. For my birthday, that's what I did. I was like, you need a thousand subscribers. Every one of my contact, I was like, yo, please, for my birthday, subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. 
then I learned, oh, you got to get 4,000 hours of watch time. I'm like, I'm not going to text them again. <laughs> Besides, don't ever do that. You think that's a good idea? Don't do that because people are just going to do that just because you asked them to. They're not going to be viewers. This is your tips on how to get popular in your YouTube channel. I was in the hospital. Thank you. I was in the St. Joseph Medical Hospital in Burbank. If you know where that's at, it's right across the street from the Walt Disney Studio. Ironically, Walt Disney did die in the hospital. So every time I got a nurse, I'm like, hey, which room did Walt Disney die in? Nobody knew. One guy's like, I didn't know that history. And I'm like, yeah, you know, well, you know, we're not at Disneyland. And I should go. <laughs> I got a catchphrase, trying to stop doing it. And I'm just gonna be like, yeah, that was something I did in my 20s. Thought it was a good idea, but then like people are like, you gonna do that for an hour? This is therapy, great. <laughs> Anyways, the catchphrase is a lot funnier when it comes out of the blue. <laughs> hey, give it up for a comedian making food, you guys, all right? Please, the chef will be coming up here and doing five minutes. You're gonna get some money and tips, and you wanna put your name in the bucket. That's pretty cool. He's a lot better than all of us. Oh, now I put some steaks on your set. I'm sorry. Too bad you don't got any steaks on the grill. <laughs> What's up? Just ribeye? It's a ribeye boy. Well, I'm doing a ripoff set, okay? The first one I did already has been, been heard before. All right. Just got off the microphone. What, going up? What did I go up third? Uh, it was fine. It was fine. I was a little like, kind of bummed out the mic has been kind of dead. I wanted to go up there and be like, what happened? This place used to be so great. This place used to be fantastic. But I wasn't feeling vindictive and probably my biggest disappointment was so many comedians aren't reading books. So many comics. Two comics reading the same book, which is pretty funny. It was all right. I, I did the one line and then I asked, yeah, it's cereal because you're a bag of tricks. And I was like, anybody have heard that before? Some guy nodded his head and I'm like, all right, well, never mind. And then I said something about that. That was funny to me about being, um, what did I say? I already forgot. It's about copying jokes. It was, I put it in there. It's been, it was on there, but that's it. That's another page in the book of YouTube of Stand Up Adventure Vlogs. It's so good. I've been in such good spirits because I have quantity of vlogs again. Feels good. But next month, uh, I'm going to have to spread them out because I don't have that many. I have one gig right now. Only one more gig. Only one more gig. Anyways, thank you so much for clicking. Thank you for liking. Thank you for leaving comments. Please share this video if you know anybody who likes watching adventures, likes reading, or likes stand-up comedy. Especially if you're trying to get into stand-up comedy because I try to give a glimpse of what it's like. Open mics to books. To books. Open mic to book gigs. I'm very interactive on Instagram. Link down below. I'm trying to get better at this but you watching this means a lot. You're great. So please, if you've never been here before or you don't already, hit that subscribe button. Oh, I can subscribe, I can subscribe. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. One love. All right, well, I'm really glad that I brought something to this. <laughs>